guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan. I'm super excited for today's video because I'm showing you guys three awesome recipes that are low calorie, high volume, and high protein. One of the things that you might know about me is that I love to eat lots of food and that I am a hungry, hungry person. And over the last year or so, I've also lost around 10 pounds. And one of the many things I've learned is to be smart with your food choices, not just in eating low calorie meals but eating meals that are satisfying filling and delicious there's no point of eating low calorie bland meals if you're gonna be starving and unsatisfied right after okay so I'm gonna show you guys some low calorie dense meals that are also filling and I'm gonna be talking calories and macros in this video I'm gonna show you guys the breakdown per recipe and hopefully give you some tips along the way as well as always the written blog post will be linked down below so you can get all of the written recipes along with the measurements all right guys if you're ready Let's get started with recipe number one. The very first recipe is going to be a vegan chicken noodle soup. Soup is super amazing, guys. Soup is super amazing, yes, because you can pack tons of veggies and goodness into your meal, and it's also very easy to make. You just throw everything into a pot. You guys know how it is. And I find soups to be incredibly satiating and satisfying as well. If you're trying to watch your weight, do be careful with soups that you buy from restaurants, especially the creamy kind, because you just never know what they're adding, okay? Anyways, to make this soup, I'm going to start with chopping up all of the veggies I'm going to add. I have some onions, carrots, potatoes, and celery. And speaking of potatoes, guys, did you know that potatoes ranked highest by far in the satiety index of all of the 38 different foods that were tested? Yes, guys, above fish, above red meat, above eggs, and all of the other foods. This means that out of all the foods that were tested, potatoes gave the highest feeling of fullness for longer. So that means eat more potatoes, okay? Once we have the veggies chopped, let's heat up just half a tablespoon of oil in a large pot on medium high heat and let's cook up the onions along with some minced garlic for a couple of minutes then let's add the rest of the veggies and cook for another couple of minutes then let's add in six cups of water and we're going to turn the heat up and let this come to a boil while that's happening guys, we're gonna soak up some dry soy curls. This is gonna be our chicken substitute and I'm just taking about 100 grams of dry soy curls and I'm gonna add about double the amount of water. We're gonna set this aside to soak for a few minutes. Then, very important step, let's add some seasonings into the soup because let's face it, we need flavor. We have a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, one tablespoon garlic powder, one tablespoon onion powder, half a tablespoon of black pepper, one tablespoon Italian seasoning, and one veggie stock cube that I'm gonna break up into smaller pieces before adding. Let's mix this well guys and again allow this to come to a boil. Once this comes to a boil, we're gonna add in one serving or 85 grams of dry pasta. I'm using farfalle. We're gonna put this into the pot. You can use whatever pasta you want. We also have those soy curls that we have now rehydrated. We're gonna drain them and add them into the pot as well. If you don't know guys, soy curls are basically dehydrated pieces of soy meat. I'll leave some links down below on where you can get them. I'm pretty much obsessed, but if you don't have soy curls or if you don't wanna use them, that's totally fine. I would recommend adding in maybe one or two cans of chickpeas that you've drained and rinsed. So guys, all you have to do is let this cook on medium low heat for about 20 minutes or so or until the potatoes and pasta are completely cooked. And that's basically it guys. Give it a taste at the end and add some salt and pepper as much as you need. And that's how you make a delicious vegan version of chicken noodle soup. And guys, I am pretty obsessed with this recipe. The soy curls do such a good job at imitating chicken, in my opinion. And I would say this recipe makes around four pretty large servings, which came to only 293 calories per serving, 19 grams of protein, six grams of fat, and 40 grams of carbohydrates. You can literally have half of this pot, okay? You can have half of this pot and it'll be less than 600 calories. What? What? I know, it's actually kind of amazing, okay? And even if you're not trying to lose weight, I would recommend eating this because it's so good and it definitely reminded me of chicken noodle soup. So I hope you guys enjoy. All right guys, the second recipe is going to be a fried rice with cauliflower. Now notice I did not say cauliflower fried rice because I do not believe in eliminating actual rice because let's face it, cauliflower is not rice. But, but I do think it can be a fantastic addition to fried rice because it can ramp up the volume and also add some more nutrients into your meal. So let's get started by making the quote unquote 
cauliflower rice by adding around two cups of cauliflower into a food processor and processing until you get this crumbly fake rice consistency and guys i'm almost ashamed and kind of shocked that i'm making cauliflower rice because i'm like so against this as an asian like no you cannot replace rice sorry not gonna happen is this how italians feel when they hear of zucchini spaghetti anyways i'll get over it guys so we've made our cauliflower crumbles and now we're going to take a large pan or wok we're going to heat just half a tablespoon of oil on medium high heat and then we can add some diced onion and minced garlic. And guys, one trick to lowering your calories easily is to be very mindful of your oil intake. Lots of people just free pour and they have no idea how much they're even adding. And oil can really ramp up your calories very easily without you actually benefiting much from it. So yeah, a little goes a long way. Make sure you measure and let's saute the onion and garlic for a couple of minutes. Then we are going to add some tofu. So I'm adding about one block of tofu. I'm actually using medium firm because that's all I had, but I would recommend using either firm or extra firm for this recipe. So all you have to do is break up the tofu roughly and crumble it with your hands and fingers. And I like to let this cook for about three to five minutes to allow the water from the tofu to evaporate and maybe even allowing the tofu to brown up slightly. So depending on the water content of your tofu, this might take a little bit longer or shorter. If you're using firm or extra firm tofu, it'll be a shorter cooking period because there's less water content. And I'm sure you guys already know this, but tofu is a fantastic source of protein and I I absolutely always recommend adding in a plant-based protein source into your meals to increase satiety. Once the tofu is cooked to your liking, we are now going to season the tofu. And I'm going to add three tablespoons of my go-to scrambled tofu seasoning, of course. If you guys don't know, my scrambled tofu seasoning is basically a mixture of different spices and seasonings that I put together into a big jar so that anytime I make scrambled tofu, I can just take out that one jar instead of 10 different spices from my messy cabinet, okay? It's made my life 10 times easier. So if you guys want that recipe, I'll link it down below. If you guys don't wanna make it, which I don't know why, uh, you can use a different mixture of spices like garlic powder, onion powder, cumin, paprika, turmeric, nutritional yeast, and salt. Next, we're gonna add in two cups of frozen mixed vegetables. Frozen vegetables are so handy to have and they are just really great to add into random dishes like this to, again, pump up the volume and also, of course, get yourself some extra veggies. And at this point, you can add your cauliflower rice mm -hmm, along with your actual rice. So I'm actually adding in one cup of cooked brown rice. This is actually leftover rice. For fried rice, I do recommend using like one day old rice or something like that. So I'm only using one cup only because I only had one cup left of my leftover rice so I probably would have actually added in maybe two cups but yeah feel free to add in an extra cup of you know leftover rice if you want but I'm just adding in one cup of brown rice so we're just gonna mix this really well until you know everything is kind of like combined well together and mixed well we're all partying it up in this wok so once that's mixed well, we can add in two tablespoons of soy sauce. And of course, if you decided to add in an extra cup of rice, feel free to add extra soy sauce, uh, maybe another tablespoon or so. But yeah, we just wanna mix this really well. And then we wanna take off the heat, take off the heat, turn off the heat, turn off the heat, and then add in one teaspoon of toasted sesame oil. And one teaspoon is gonna go a long way, my friends. Toasted sesame oil is so delicious and it makes fried rice taste amazing and that's pretty much it on how you make the fried rice with cauliflower and i like to top each serving with a little bit of green onions and also some toasted sesame seeds and guys, I divided this into four servings because as you can see, it's quite a lot of volume and it only came to 222 calories per serving, 16 grams of protein, eight grams of fat, and 23 grams of carbohydrates. But guys, I want to strongly state that 222 calories is not enough food for one meal. I would definitely eat at least double that amount to make an actual meal. So if you wanted to make a full meal out of this recipe, I would divide this recipe into two servings, which would bring the numbers to 400 
445 calories per serving, 32 grams of protein, 16 grams of fat, and 47 grams of carbs. The reason why I made this into four servings though is because I like variety in my meals, so I would probably eat this as a side to something else, maybe the soup for example, and then that would make a complete meal for me. So yeah, eating too low in calories is definitely not good. It's not healthy, not sustainable at all, and I do not recommend doing that. But the whole point is to show you guys that you can add a ton of volume into your meals just by adding in some low calorie dense vegetables like cauliflower in them. And they say that it takes your body around 20 minutes to recognize that it's full. And for someone like me that can eat a whole meal in like five to 10 minutes, adding in some volume with veggies can be super helpful into feeling satisfied. And the third recipe is going to be a very simple and easy recipe. We're gonna make a simple buffalo tofu with roasted cauliflower and sweet potatoes. First, we are going to preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we can chop up our sweet potato and cauliflower into nice bite-sized pieces. And then I'm just gonna transfer those pieces into a lined baking sheet. And I love sweet potato. Sweet potato has so many health benefits. It is delicious just on its own. I love the fact that you really don't need to season it too much and it's just so, so good. So highly recommend adding some sweet potato into your diet. Then we want to chop up the tofu as well into smaller bite-sized pieces. And if you wanted to press the tofu to get rid of the excess water, you can. Honestly, I almost never do that, but in case you wanted to, all you have to do is lay out the tofu pieces flat and preferably you wanna have a piece of paper towel underneath the tofu as well, which of course I forgot to do. But yeah, cover the tofu with a piece of paper towel and then cover that with a pan or a couple of pans to weigh it down to squeeze out that water. And then we can set that aside and then back to the cauliflower and sweet potatoes. So let's add in two tablespoons of oil, one tablespoon each for the cauliflower and one for the sweet potatoes. We're gonna mix with our hands and I think you could honestly get away with using half the amount of oil and it would still work for this recipe. So yeah, it's up to you if you wanna use a little bit less oil. Then let's add in two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, two teaspoons of garlic powder, two teaspoons of paprika and half a teaspoon of salt all over and then Again, spread it evenly and mix it up. Then into another pan. By the way, I should have lined this pan. Make sure you line this with nonstick liner. We're gonna add the pressed tofu. And into the tofu, we're gonna add one tablespoon of oil, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon onion powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and three tablespoons of vegan buffalo hot sauce. I'm just using my usual, which is Frank's hot sauce. And honestly guys, in hindsight, I think that it would have been better for me to leave the hot sauce out and bake the tofu first and then add the hot sauce after baking the tofu. But um, yeah, that's just one little thing that I thought of afterwards. So yeah, I'm just mixing this well. And then after you mix it, you wanna add in one tablespoon of cornstarch. And that's what's gonna make your tofu nice and crispy. And one thing I wanna stress again is to line your baking sheet with a non-stick liner. I didn't do that, so it got a bit sticky. So I ended up transferring the tofu pieces onto one of the metal trays from my air fryer so that it would cook properly. Anyway, you want to spread out the tofu pieces so that they are not touching each other too much. And when you're ready, you can add everything into the oven and bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. For the cauliflower and sweet potatoes, I baked for around 30 to 40 minutes, tossing things halfway through. And for the tofu, I did around 20 to 30 minutes flipping the pieces halfway through. And when the tofu was done baking, I took it out and added another one to two tablespoons of buffalo sauce and I baked it again for another two to three minutes. And that's it. That's pretty much how simple it is to make this meal. It is so simple and so easy. And all I did was I divided this into three separate meals and this came to 486 calories per serving, 22 grams of protein, 25 grams of fat, and 46 grams of carbs. And I would probably eat this actually with the side salad or some more side veggies, which is why I added some celery there. And this kind of like seems like a bit of a cheat meal, but it's very healthy and very good. And yeah, I love it. It tastes great. It's fantastic. Definitely try this out. All right, you guys, so that is it for my low calorie, high volume, high protein recipes. I'm going to leave a link down below to my other low calorie recipes videos. I hope you guys found these helpful and you took something from this video. If you did, please give this video a big thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe and let me know down below if you want more of these high volume, low calorie recipes. I also have a video on how I lost the weight, which I'll link down below as well. Remember guys that you don't have to go on a crash diet or starve yourself to lose 
lose weight. So please don't do that. It actually works against you. So make sure you're eating plenty of healthy food to fuel your body and feel your best. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.